What's up, y'all? I'm out here at the range, as you can see back behind me this morning. Pretty nice temperature out here, but it sure is windy, and you might not recognize behind me because I'm at a little bit different perspective. I'm down here at 25 yards to do some 5.56 five, testing. So as you can see, we got us a little bit of a modified version of the jelly contraption here. We got everything weighed down so it don't blow over. I got my chrono and got two blocks of gel here, freshly melted, so hadn't done any tests in this one. We'll get a really good picture of what goes on, and we're probably going to need pretty much much all this space to get this one done now as y'all can also see i'm gonna stay with my heavy clothing barrier on this that's got the denim fleece and two layers of cotton t-shirt material y'all let me know if you'd rather see bear gel when i do these rifle tests like this i'm kind of undecided myself i guess either way it's a good thing to have that clothing barrier because you know if you're not talking about two-legged critters even if you're talking about four-legged critters it could kind of simulate uh hide and fur or whatnot but if y'all would rather see these things done in bear gel for the rifles let me know in the comments but like i said what we're testing down here today is a couple of 556 five, by 45 rounds mainly these federal champion jacketed soft points 55 grain like i say 556 five, you can see there the soft point on it these are the ones i'm really purposely testing here today so what i figured we do is since these are soft point we'll put them up against just some regular old federal ball ammo somebody requested that i do this and i think it is a good idea also so federal american eagle on this just a regular old 193 ball here 55 grain of course 193 now the velocity on this american eagle ball is saying 3165 feet per second at the muzzle the champion soft point here it doesn't have any ballistics on the box but it's probably going to be pretty similar if i was going to guess now y'all know most of the time when i do these rifle tests at any kind of distance i also try to put a little target behind the chrono just to get you a kind of a little rough group test on them but it's so windy out here today it's, it's going to be futile i mean my table's wobbling down there this thing's been wobbling so what i did is try to get where uh since I'm so close, I've got my sight zeroed obviously further. I wanted to see which kind of drop marker I needed to use, so I did send a few rounds. This is three rounds right here now. Granted, like I say, it's only 25 yards. That's three rounds of that soft point right there. They're basically all touching each other. Um, I was aiming right here at the center, so I figured out my drop marker, and then I just wanted to test my drop marker. One of these, I believe this one here, was another one of that soft point, and then I switched over to three FMJs, and then you can see the group there. So they're all basically grouping the same hitting basically the same point of impact so let me take y'all back down here to the shooting position and show you what we're running these from and so back up here to perspective y'all most used to seeing as you can see what we're going to be running these things out of is the angry joe ar-14 here the dog face pony soldier uh psa lower and upper psa freedom barrel i believe it is 16 inch barrel with the one and seven twist obviously you can see stainless steel so a very common rifle and length to get a good idea of what these things do so i think as long as i can send these rounds down there into the jail without the wind blowing me off the bench it should be a good test right here let me get everything set up and let's check them out all right let's get some speeds on these things i'm gonna do a five round average from each one we're gonna start with the federal soft point first like i say both of them 55 grains again these didn't have any kind of ballistics on the box um now obviously we're not gonna see the muzzle velocity number one we're at no we're not at the muzzle we're at 25 yards so if i was gonna guess on this i would probably say somewhere around 28 2850 if it's loaded up good uh but let's see what happens now i can't see my dog on chrono reading from down here so i'm gonna assume that we're getting some readings and then i'll go down there and check it let's see what we get i think i got my hold over right so y'all shouldn't see any drama blasting the chrono or anything let's get five rounds All right, like I said, I can't see any readings at all. Let me go down there and check and make sure we did get five, and then we'll run them American Eagle uh, FMJs. All right, we did get all five readings on those, and it was pretty close to what my guess was. I'll take you down here in a second after we run these, and I'll show you all the readings, of course. But let's do these uh, M193 ball rounds. Again, 55 grain M193 ball. Just some good old FMJ. I expect these are probably going to be pretty doggone similar. Let's see what we get here. Evidently, my... My holdover point's pretty good, so I'm gonna stick with that. Is that five or four? That was five. All right, I think we should've got all five on that. Let's go down there and check them out. 
All right, y'all, there was actually a pretty good bit of difference in velocity between these two rounds. So what you're looking at here first is the soft point. You had a high of 28.38, a low of 27.81, which gave you an average of 28.12, and then the extreme spread on that was 57. And then as far as those 193 FMJs, as you can see, quite a bit faster. The high there was 29.81, the low was 29.33. That gave us an average of 29.59 with an extreme spread of 48. So 29.59 average on those FMJs, and then again on the soft point, it was 28.12, so that gives you 147 feet per second difference. So 147 feet per second faster out of those ball rounds, that's uh, right about 5%, so pretty decent little difference there. Uh, I don't think that's gonna make any difference as far as what they were gonna do in the gel at either one of those speeds. I believe we're gonna see some good stuff. Now the soft point, I think it'll stay together at those speeds, hopefully it will. As far as the FMJ, I'm not sure whether it's gonna tumble out of what it's gonna do. So let me get this stuff set up and y'all know what time it is. All right, y'all, it's America's rifle jelly time. We're gonna put one of each round into the gel. We're gonna start with this soft point first. See what it does for us. I'm probably gonna regret not putting a uh, tarp on the ground down there, but I'm gonna take my chances on this one, y'all. Let's see what she does. All right, that actually should have been a perfect hit. Let's go down there and check out what we got. All right, y'all, as y'all can already see, that was a perfect placement down there, and that's really looking nice. I am really liking what I'm seeing down there. So let's try this FMJ now, the 193. This one I'm worried about as far as what it's going to do in the jail, maybe coming out or something, because it's really difficult to get lined up uh, at a distance like this as far as the right elevations, the right windage, everything, getting the block angled the right way. I think I've got it set up pretty good, though. Let's see what we get. Uh, okay, yeah, I see, the, I see the entrance right below that soft point. Hopefully it's far enough away that we can get a good picture of both of them. Let's go check that stuff out. All right, well, wasn't so lucky on that one, y'all. That's what I was worried was going to happen. It went right exactly where I put it, but then it curved up the top and went out the top of the block. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to send one more down there. I'm just going to move it into that clear area. I was trying to save this other side for a different uh, test, but it ain't going to happen, I don't believe. Um, I started not to put another one, but I'm going to put another one. I know this is going to do the same thing, though. This is one of them cases where, against my better judgment, I'm going to put another one just to see if I can catch that FMJ. I think even if it don't curve out, the top of the side it's gonna go out the end but you can see the tumbling down there which is what fmjs do so hopefully it'll stay in on this one all right that definitely went right exactly where i put it i don't see anything curving out the side let's go see if it came out the top or if it stayed in All right, we actually got very lucky on that one, y'all. We actually ended up catching the projectile. You can see it down there, but it does look exactly the same. I mean, the exact same wound channel. I would say we just lost this projectile here. I might walk back down there and see if I can see it on the ground because I bet you it just barely popped out because it looks nearly identical to the one that we did catch. But anyway, let me show you what we got down here. Everything is completely separated, so everything's valid down here. The only thing that crossed over is something that crossed over right here, this FMJ right over that little track from the soft point but it had already done its thing at that point so it really didn't affect anything but what we got here now this one right here all this disruption right there that's that first soft point so that's some fantastic wound channel and disruption right there now you can see it does start shedding some material no doubt about it i see quite a bit of little lead pieces but very very nice disruption carries on through here and it looks like it's maybe a couple of inches maybe an inch or so short of this first block definitely 
expanded, but also, like I said, a lot of fragmentation from that one right there. And then the FMJs, this one right here on the bottom, that was the first one. As you can see, not a whole lot going on until it starts tumbling and doing its thing right here. Massive disruption when that happens. That's what these 5.56 FMJs do when they start tumbling. You get a ton of disruption there. Now, the downside to that, if you, if you consider it a downside, and a lot of people would, is after that point, it's very unpredictable. As you can see, this one here curved up and out the top. And then the second one is behind this uh, soft point. I'll show you here in a second. But again, it was really straight until right about here. And you can probably see it back there. It looks just like this right here. So again, it started tumbling. And then this time, this one curved left and down, where this one here curved right and up. So it's very, very unpredictable. That's the downside to pr really any FMJ, not just out of a rifle. But we see the same thing out of handguns all the time when we talk about it. The unpredictability and inconsistency of the FMJ is where it falls short compared to some other premium, if you want to call them rounds. Now, as far as the penetration on it, this soft point here is exactly 14 and a quarter inches. So some really nice penetration on that one. And then your FMJs, this first one went out of the block at 16 and a half. And then this one here is actually stopped at exactly 16 and a half inches of forward momentum. And you can see it sitting there between the two blocks. So let's see if I can give you a few different angles to give you a better picture of each of the individual tracks here. Again, that's the FMJ on the bottom. All of that disruption right there is that soft point i'll show you from the other side but here you go again that fmj now go back to the soft point you can see all those little bits of lead down in there the fmj again just crazy tumbling that one right there that one came from the back side you can see the projectile no kind of fragmentation it looks like it's a little bit smashed right there though and then there's your soft point projectile obviously all two pieces and then the other fmj track went out the top that's this big one right here on the front and then here you can see an overhead view. All this right here is stretching of the gel because of the force right there from that soft point. But then, like I said, that second FMJ is that one there. You can see looks exactly like the one in the front. Starts out pretty much nothing. You get all that tumbling, and then it crossed on over and then popped out the side right there, or almost popped out the side. All right, let's check out these projectiles, y'all. So definitely, as you can see, a big difference here. This is the soft point, obviously, just a massive expansion, all kind of fragmentation. Now, I'm holding it kind of careful because as I was pulling it out, the jacket wanted to come off. I could probably separate it, but I want to get it measured first. As you can see, though, like I said, really mangled up, all kind of peeling back, bunch of fragmentation on that one. So it definitely done its thing. And then the FMJ here, actually, I thought it was completely intact. Look at at it but it lost quite a bit of lead here you can see it flattened itself out like a tube of toothpaste and squirted a lot of the lead out the end there so i don't know i guess it was just the energy and the tumbling the centrifugal force causing that right there but that's pretty neat right there i thought so let's see just how much they did lose we'll check out this soft point first because we know it lost a ton there that one is exactly 49.2 grains now they both started at 55 so 49.2 on the soft point there there went that jacket i was trying to not to lose and then your fmj here to 193 that one is actually at 46.8 let me double check that and make sure yeah 46.8 on that one and then again this soft point here is 49.2 so you lost more on this fmj i would have said just the opposite but now that i look in this gel here you can see quite a few little strings of lead coming out from those tumble areas on both of them and then as far as our expansion here, it's going to be very difficult to measure this doggone soft point, but I'll try here. So from this direction, you got 521, but then this longest way here, you got 0.77. So just some really, really uneven, erratic uh, expansion and fragmentation, that frag expansion we get a lot of times. And then the FMJ actually did have some widening, I guess you could call it, not really so much expansion, but if you measured across this area here, you got 301. And then as far as the length on it, you got 740. So you got quite a big chunk of stuff in there tumbling around causing some damage. 
range. So there you have it, y'all. The Federal 556 Soft Point versus 193 FMJ. Definitely two different methods of madness between these right here. Now, either one of them would absolutely get the job done. It would be a tough call, I guess, for me, especially if I'm talking about a self-defense type of thing. I would probably go with this Soft Point just because I feel like you would know that you're going to get this every time. Now, this FMJ, I mean, it's still just as nasty damage, just as much devastation, but you've got that unpredictability like I talked about. So I know a lot of people do not like that at all because if this thing comes out, there's just no telling where it's going to end up. So if I was going to pick, I think I would go with this soft point, but let me know down in the comments what y'all think about the performance from both of these. All right, y'all, that's going to wrap it up for another really good 5.56 AR test. I really don't think there was any doubt we were going to see some good performance out of both of these. It is what it is. I mean, an AR-15 running 5.56 by 45, it's just a jack of all trades. This thing just gets it done. Really, no matter what the ammo, you're putting some nice energy down range, some really nice velocity, nice accuracy, a very easy to shoot and manipulate rifle for pretty much anybody who gets behind the trigger of these things. I mean, the results right here say everything you need to know about why everybody in America needs an AR-15. But most of y'all out there already know I'm a huge fan of the AR. If I could only have one rifle for the rest of my life, it would be an AR-15 chambered in 556 by 45 But let me know down in the comments, what do y'all think about them? If you did enjoy this video, take a second and hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure you got those notifications turned on so you don't miss anything when I upload it. As always, I appreciate all my range gang members for hitting that join button and every single one of y'all out there for supporting the channel like y'all do. I'm going to try to get one more test done out here today fighting this wind. Tons more stuff headed y'all's way, so be on the lookout. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay prepared, and I'll see you soon.